Hey YouTube, Zen here. It's been a while. <coughs> anyway, I've recently felt like making some videos and seeing as I just finished a rather long project, I felt like this is as good a time as any, so I'm going to revive an old YouTube project. That's right, it's time for another Minecraft Let's Play. Oh yeah. Or maybe not. And seeing as it doesn't look like I'm going to have any decent Rainbow Six footage anytime soon, I guess I'll be starting with this one. Okay, let's get started. So let's talk about what we'll actually be doing. Earlier you would have heard me talking about a project I worked on, and that project was a sprite editor for Unity. Now while I was working on that, one of the things I made while testing it out was this guy. So what we're going to do is make a character controller for him, and eventually probably build a game around him. So to begin I'm going to make an IK system for his arms and his legs. It's not actually going to be IK, it's going to be trigonometry, but it'll look pretty similar. And I'll also pair it with this sprite rotation script that I have here that makes everything look cool and uh, sticks to the sprite art style that I've got going. But before I do any of that I'm going to have to pull off his arms. Well that was a lot less bloody than I was hoping for, but now we can get started padding the video, I mean coding. Okay, so we've done coding and now we have this result. And now he has two arms. So before I go any further with this guy, I'm just going to go through the scripting and explain how it all works. We'll start with the sprite rotation script first because that's pretty much the simplest. The main part of it is this get rotated sprite function here, which uh, will output a sprite that's been rotated by whatever into we uh, assign here. And the way it works is it uses one of the five branches of magic known as math to basically just rearrange the pixels. It's uh, pretty complicated and I'm not going to say I understand how it works, so I've got some cos here and we've got some sign there, so it's all pretty good. So then moving on from that we come to the sprite IK controller. This one's a little bit more complicated, but effectively what we're doing in this function here where we get the IK values is trigonometry. So we have the length of the first section of the arm, the length of the second section of the arm, and the length of the distance between the target position and the first section of the arm. And once we have those angles, we do the uh, B times B plus C times C minus A times A divided by 2 times, no, divided by 2 times length B times C apparently, because that's how trigonometry works, times 180 divided by pi. And that gives us the number 
that is the angle that one of these arms needs to be and then we just basically do a whole bunch of other stuff and then we point the uh, second joint at the target position and then it's all good and we only do that if the length of the two arms is smaller than the distance between the target and the shoulder position because if it isn't then they'll just be pointing in a straight line and we can just do that down here and save a lot of calculations so that's good uh, and then they get applied up here here we have the update positions and update rotations method update positions gets the values for the IKs and sets them and then it positions the arms the update rotations then gets the values again because they all it might have changed slightly when we're uh, when we're positioning the arms based on where they are and the pixel snap happens so we get the IK values again and then we set the rotations and all of that is a slightly simplified version of how this works and after some problems with Cortonians he is now fully rigged And of course by fully rigged I mean if you don't look at all the bugs like the one that happens if you try and flip him. Yeah that's pretty terrible. And of course there's other things that aren't bugs like the fact that we should probably never ever rotate his head. And then there's other things like the fact that I've just about covered what I wanted to do in this video and we're only up to about six minutes. I could pad the video a bit more but nobody wants to see that. And now all the bugs are gone. Just wait one second. And with a touch up to the editor, the rigging is done. In the next part I'll go about making a character controller for him so he can move around. I already have some cool ideas about how I'm going to do that and I'm expecting it's going to make me cry during the coding. I'd expect an extra long padded section in the next video. And with that being said, if you've made it this far, thanks for watching. It has been tricky making this video after not making any for a while. This video has had its fair share of quality problems, but I'll be looking to fix those in the future. First thing I'm going to do is buy a pop filter for my mic. But if you'll excuse me, I've got to go finish watching One Piece. That shouldn't take too long. Sigh. Okay, bye.